So I'm Father Ted Tipe, I'm an older Jesuit, as you can see. I've been at Xavier since 1961, and uh, what I'm going to show you is something that I was never brought to Xavier to do. I was a chemist, I am a chemist, and I began teaching in ninth, the fall of 61 as a chemistry teacher. Uh, this went on for about seven or eight years. Xavier received, was able to get a very talented young chemistry professor who by some means or other was able to get himself into publishing in one of the world's best chemical journals, the American Chemical Society. And so, <clears throat> our chemistry numbers were going down in those days. What happened, we had a higher, I think, interest in chemistry and we were teaching many students a general chemistry course. Sometimes it had over 200 students in it in those early days. The interest in chemistry was dying off by the late 70s or early 80s and science in general was dying off. And as a result, our need for as many teachers was decreasing. And so the only person that we could drop without giving probably a persons with tenure, uh, asking them to leave, which wouldn't work, was this young man. And his name happened to be, of all things, Dr. Smart. <laughs> but anyway, he was up for grabs, as it were. And as a result of this, the chair of the department, who was a dear friend of mine by this time, and another very well-known chemist, uh, Dr. Richard O'Neill, who has since deceased, gave up one course that he was routinely teaching and went into the early stages of the computer center. And he was one of those who began our computer center years ago. So I went to, uh, I was at a table one night and a lot of things in the uh, university developed out of the Jesuits at their table at dinner at night. <laughs> we were that influential. And so as a result of this, Father uh, Flynn, Father Larry Flynn had come to Xavier. He was the head of the communication arts department. I knew nothing about the communication arts department at that time. He was at table and he said, you know, you used to like photography years ago. I need somebody to teach photography in the communication arts department. And I said, well, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> He's a full-time chemistry teacher. He said, uh, is there any way we could arrange that you would be putting a course in photography into your 12 hours? And so I went to the chair of the chemistry department and he said, oh, that's wonderful. He said, I'm teaching one course in physics so we can hold Dr. Smart. You teach one course in, in the communication arts department, that'll cut it down to nine hours. And we have Dr. O'Neill teaching one course in now computer work, so that'll cut four hours out of the program and we can put Dr. Smart in just like that. So we did, beautiful. I was teaching the course that I did since love and which I still did until about a year ago. I'm just quitting now. So that's how TP got into teaching photography and it went even to the point where I was teaching two courses instead of one. One was called the science of photography, which I invented literally in those days. It was a course that was uh, a course that uh, included both chemistry and photography, and so I had to invent it and work it up together, but I was teaching that almost 20 years too. So it, uh, it was a chemistry course because our enrollment never did pick up totally, and this was a way of getting about 20 more students into it. So it worked out very well through the years. The title of the lecture I'm, not, I'm now going to give is I see 
God's face in every flower. And I guess I see God's face in how my life turned out as Xavier through my photography also. Let us pray for the faith to recognize God's presence in our world. <clears throat> God our Father, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the splendor of creation, in the beauty of human life. Touched by your hand, our world is holy. Help us to cherish the gifts that surround us, to share your blessings with our brothers and sisters, and to experience the joy of life in your presence. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. All creation came into being by means of God's creative world. St. John tells us that not one thing came into being but through him. Further, God sustains all things in existence, for in him all creation lives and moves and has its being. Jared Manley Hopkins wrote that all the world is charged with the grandeur of God. To see creation as it truly is, we must learn to take a long, loving look at the real world about us, at all the simple beauty which we often overlook in our busy and crowded lives. Comments from photography students of mine expressed for many years, you opened our eyes to see things that I've never seen before. And I hope that I also opened their minds and their hearts to see the loving hand of God in all things. This is a view which many of you probably recognize as the Grand Canyon. And uh, I loved it because in order to take this picture, you really needed a uh, special filter which would cut through that. That's 90 miles away or so. And it goes right through all the haze when you know what you're doing. Huh? The inanimate world is filled with a natural silence that speaks eloquently of God. St. Ignatius, gazing at the heavens at night, was ecstatic in prayer. And in our own way, we feel the enchantment of the sky, the mountains, the ocean, and the quiet beauty of Yosemite in winter, something simple that I've always loved. I was very fortunate to have been there on a winter's day by accident, and uh, it was a delight. And here is another view of the uh, Yosemite in winter. The animate world pulsates with God's beauty and majesty from something like the redwood trees that we see, or elephants, or even to the smallest bees and the hummingbirds. Even those tiny bees have God somehow in them, huh? And in Cincinnati, a beautiful view of an October day with all the varieties and forms and colors of flowers that could be in our gardens or nearby in one of our woods. Photography can easily lead to prayer. For Thomas Merton, the camera was a contemplative instrument. He photographed some of the images of his contemplation while walking in nature. It was a catalyst for his prayer. And I find it the same myself. And that is a view, I think, of a garden, or at least a bit of a garden, somewhat similar to where Merton may have walked. 
and my heart skips a beat as I contemplate the beauty of both large and small objects in nature. Here is a very small one, as you can see. Flowers in particular touch me in a way difficult to fully describe. I can best let them speak for themselves as I show some of them to you. They speak the language of the heart, a language instilled in them by our loving Creator. Say it with flowers. We humans formulated that statement, but God said it first. God created these lovely creatures to tell us how much he loves us. And we might ask ourselves, what is one special gift or talent with which God has blessed us? Lord, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the splendor of creation and in the beauty of human life. Touched by your hand, our world is holy and help us to cherish the gifts that surround us and come to appreciate your eternal loveliness. From our own garden at Xavier, our present president, Father Mike Graham, his mother was a famous gardener in her own way, or is one, I suppose I should say, and uh, we grew some of these things right next to our home at Xavier, and I love to photograph close-ups of this lovely, lovely flower which we saw each spring of the year. St. Augustine tells us it is by design that God hid the last days from us so that we would be on the lookout for him every day. A flower speaks to us. Look at me. I am the best version of myself. I am authentic. I radiate my simple beauty. And the flower concludes, it is as close to becoming a prayer as my abilities will present. This flower speaks to us. Here I am, a bit of loveliness. I lay my life at your service to make you happy and to remind you of our loving God. If you notice this, this is a very simple looking flower and it's a, something that we would grow in our backyard or in our gardens today. It's a simple iris plant, open a little more than average, but. Uh, it's a beautiful one and with a lot of rich colors that you don't always see. As you'll notice, this looks like a very ordinary flower. It isn't, it's a lovely orchid. It's grown down in Florida, as a matter of fact, with a green stone wall behind it. And it, it's really very lovely uh, because this was a, an orchid garden that I was visiting. And this is a very close up, as you can imagine. The flower is maybe only about uh, two inches to three inches across the top. And uh, I just love it because uh, we were growing them in our own garden at Xavier. And now I come to one that I'm particularly fond of. The flower is very simple, it's a red rose. One of my photography students uh, wrote a poem and so I picked out a simple red rose for her poem, and the poem is as follows. Petals round, their red mouths exhale breath, the scent of sweet mystery. We inhale and wondered at their beauty. Fragrant flowers ourselves, we part our lips and perfume the world with prayer. This is a very simple close-up of a daylily that some of my friends grow in their backyard. I ponder your splendor and your glory in all your wonderful works, for they recall your ample goodness 
and joyfully sing your praise. Our hearts have a God-shaped hole in them that only God can fill. This is a close-up of a white orchid. It almost looks like a bug, doesn't it? <laughs> Go break to the needy, sweet charity's bread. For giving is living, the angel said. But then we ask, must I give again and again? Oh no, said the angel, with yourself be true. Just give until the Lord stops giving to you. In the twilight of life, God will not judge us on our earthly possessions and human successes but on how well we have loved. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to labor and not ask for reward, except to know that I am doing your will. God's presence is not discerned at the time when it is upon us but often afterwards when we look back. What seems to be God's foolishness is wiser than human weakness or human wisdom. This was taken surprisingly at uh, Lunken Airport and it was difficult to get this home because it was so full of stickers. So I was riding my bike at Lunken some time ago and I had to put this in a plastic bag on the handlebar to keep myself from bleeding. Ponder your splendor and your glory in all your wonderful works, for they recall your simple goodness and joyfully sing your praise. This orchid reminds me of this quote. To everyone, there openeth various ways. The high soul climbs the highway, and the low soul gropes the low. But in between and on misty flats, the rest drift to and fro. But to everyone there openeth a highway and a low, and everyone decideth which way their souls will glow. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart, and I will recount all your wonders. Nothing here below is profane for those who know how to see. On the contrary, everything is sacred. Simple red grass. But you know, earth is crammed with heaven and every common bush is aflame with God, and only he who sees takes off his shoes. Happy are they who grieve not for what they have not, but give thanks for what they do have. When my mother was alive, she loved lilies of the valley, and so this one is in there for her honor. Sing a new song for the Lord. Sing it and bless God's name. Tell the whole world of the simplicity of God's glory. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed. For wherever I turn my eyes, if I survey the ground that I tread or gaze upon the skies, there's not a plant or flower below that makes your glory known. These again are white orchids, in case you were wondering. Here I am, a bit of loveliness. I lay my life at your service to make you happy and to remind you of our loving God. Yours are the only hands 
which can do God's work. Yours are the only eyes through which God's compassion can shine forth on a troubled world. What is humankind, Lord, that you remember us? The human race that you care so much for us. Some people complain that God puts thorns on roses. But you know, others give thanks that God puts roses among thorns. Troubles are often the means that God uses to fashion people into something better than they are. God is the only maker of all things, large or small, near or far. And he paints the simple wayside flower and he lights an evening star. Under all the false, overloaded, glittering masquerade, there is in every person a noble nature. And this is a close-up of part of a lady slipper orchid. Just a part of it, but it almost looks human, doesn't it? Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. There's not a plant or a flower on this earth below that makes your glory known. And all that borrows life from you is ever in your care. And everywhere that we can be, you, God, are present there. I cannot gauge my wealth by what I have in the bank. The only valid gauge is an inventory of what I have in my heart. Come and see all the great works that God has brought forth by his love. Lord, you are praised by all earth creatures, each in its own way. And with all the splendor of heavenly worship, you still delight in such tokens of love that we on earth can offer. All that I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all that I have not seen. Is death a leap into a void? Of course not. It's to throw yourself into the arms of God. Lord, you were praised by all the earth creatures, each in its own way. And with all the splendor of heavenly worship, you still delight in such tokens of love as we on earth can offer. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Let me walk in the beauty, uh, in beauty and ever behold the red and purple sunset. A lovely ending for our little slideshow this morning. And Lord, how beautiful creation is, the work which you did bless. So what then, Lord, must you be like? You are eternal loveliness. <laughs>